just cruising along here. We've been on the water now for about an hour. And it's really busy this weekend, and it's real low. So you can see all the sandbars. It's been uh, jumping back and forth across the river, trying to find the channel that goes through, the deeper channel that goes through. I don't run too deep, but I have a Bigfoot motor, and it's set up so that the cavitation plate is one inch below the bottom of the boat. So I hang down a little bit. Beautiful day. I'm going to go up maybe another hour or so and then uh, find a nice sandbar and chill out for a little bit. Finally, past most of the traffic. Sandbars everywhere, it's really beautiful. We've recently got a lot of rain, so there's a lot of sediment in the water and a lot of trash leaves and reeds and little sticks and stuff like that. We finally made it past the majority of the traffic and now we are easy cruising up river. We're gonna go to I find a nice remote sandbar. Got everything for a feast, a few beers. where I've been chilling the last hour or so using my new Bibini shade I think this is where I'll camp. Got my sandbar marked by my chair. And the boat is untied.
up. Put some line here. that I use for kayaking and this test shows you know we probably have eight mile an hour winds right now blowing straight at us the boat is a 14 foot um, all aluminum with no decking it's as light as it could possibly be and I keep it that way so that I just fill it with gear and I can go as fast as I can but this little Bruce anchor I want to say it's like a four pound Bruce anchor, which is pretty, which is pretty good. It's pretty lightweight for being able to hold my bow. So we'll see. It's, it's almost completely level with my camp, maybe a little bit ahead of it. And we'll just keep watching it all night long and see what it does. So I pushed my boat all the way up to the edge and chair. I set it out earlier and it's blowing down the uh, down the sandbar so I got I gotta go get that. I got some match light which match light, match light is so convenient. Here's some sizzling. I'm gonna be finished for the night. Let's go check that steak. I really haven't set up any of camp. You'll see it here in a second. So I'm gonna start some water. Got the solo stove. Got the actual burner inside, but I'm just going to put it on the barbecue right now and then fill it up with some water.
There she is. Holding strong. The water has receded about two and a half feet, so I'm glad that I anchored her instead of pulled her up on shore. And then camp for the night. I have my kayaking chair, water, big piece of AstroTurf, ice chest, all of my cooking and cleaning and there's a bunch of stuff in there. I have a thermocell. This is the extra large Cabela's cot. The pad is the big Agnes axle air uninsulated very comfortable for summer and then my summer bag is a 50 degree apex quilt from enlightened equipment and I got the apex so that it could get wet and it will still be warm I've got some possum down socks and then my beanie is from Be Love Knit. Be the love. This, this had all of everything that I was going to use throughout the day. Toiletries, sleeping clothes. morning. The water has definitely rose. I went out as soon as I woke up and pulled the boat in way closer. I just did it all. I just pulled the anchor and walked it over. It was up to my waist when I walked out there for my sunglasses and then I camp I slept beautifully I've got some coffee and some sausages to make weather's probably 75 right now. It's just so perfect. And she's still floating. That's where I camped last night. If you remember, this sandbar was much, much bigger. So the water has come up maybe 12, 15 inches. That's why I pulled the boat so much closer. This is kind of how I have the boat set up. It's it's plumbed for a battery for running night lights and then also a dome light or a cargo light and a trolling motor. But I didn't bring the battery. I sit over here on the left hand side because I'm right hand dominant. So I steer the tiller with my right hand. So I try to put as much weight as I can over on the right side since I'm on the left. There it is, just a little baby Bruce anchor. So I've just been 
idling down river now. I pointed back north so I could show you that sign on the left hand side where that bluff comes out is the border to the Imperial Wildlife Refuge. And they've got a bunch of laws up there. They prohibited this and prohibited that. And then if you look right here, see that that uh, buzzard turkey vulture on the post kind of ominous right there but this is the first campsite the outpost for Pocacho and it's got picnic tables and tent spots and fire pits. Now you can get to these all these campsites by a road. So make sure you pay all of your camping costs at the kiosk because I have absolutely been checked before and don't gather wood. This is one of my favorite parts of the river. Well, our lower section. Little island. The river cuts sharp right here against this cliff. So it's real deep and it moves fast and you can jump off that cliff. I've done some fly fishing right here for topwater bass. Here's another backwater. This one has a really fun tunnel that you have to go through to get to it. But the group that I'm trying to take canoeing, hopefully that happens this year if all the schedules align. The campsite that we will stay at the night on the river is that one. Unless we find a really nice sandbar. Back out onto this beautiful stretch of river. So here we are, pulling in. Got the no way care. Adiós.
Yes.